We come to our last speaker of the day, which is quite uh, sad. It is a bit sad. I've had a good time so far. I hope you guys are still having a good time. Uh, our last speaker is David Perrell, who is the co-founder of Obox Themes, which I'm sure a lot of you will know. Uh, Obox is the only theme company in the world which are partners with Tumblr, WordPress, and Theme Forest as well. Uh, they boast nearly 100 themes now as well. And David is going to be talking to us about the current state of the WordPress theme industry. So uh, I hope you enjoy our last speaker of the day, Mr. David Perrell. doing this talk, uh, I only found out yesterday that it started at quarter to five in the afternoon, I'm like, holy crap, Obox ends work at five pretty much religiously, so I was pretty shocked that I had to work past five o'clock, um, so I'm going to try and keep it quite short. Uh, before, uh, earlier this year, a um, little bit of an interesting fact was authors who sold their themes on the theme forest weren't actually allowed to speak at WordCamps, that because uh, we went to 100% GPL on Theme Forest, even though we were 100% GPL on the other site. Um, things escalated when people realized that Obox was selling themes on Theme Forest and on WordPress.com. So they're like, how come people on uh, people who sell on Theme Forest can't speak at WordCamp, but Obox can sell themes on WordPress.com and Theme Forest? So it was because of because of that that uh, eventually uh, Matt Mullenweg and the guys from Envato decided to sort out something and come up with a 100% GPL option on Theme Forest. So, big up to them for sorting that out so I can get this talk, which is going to run out of time. So, what I'm going to talk about today is just, it's not really the state of the WordPress industry, it's just more about how the product, how we used to create products and how it's evolved into what we have today. And um, WordPress was a blogging platform, it's now definitely not a blogging platform. A blogging platform, something like Tumblr or Ghost or Something like that, medium, less thing. Okay, so back in the day, uh, Mark and I, my brother co-founder, we had a video blog called From the Couch, and it was a tech blog, and we did it every single day, and the way that we recorded these shocking video blogs, which I refuse to show, uh, was with a cell phone camera with a press stick on a tripod. And what would happen is one of two things. The cell phone camera would get warm, so the cell phone would dip and you kind of like try to stay in shot. Um, or you'd like be seven minutes into the video and someone phone and you'd lose the whole video, so you had to restart. Um, over time, uh, we got a lot of views and stuff, but eventually we stopped because it was exhausting and so on. These days, uh, the big tech blogs are now doing video blogs pretty much on a weekly basis, and they got put on production teams, they got lighting on multiple cameras, they definitely do not use a cell phone camera to film their tech blogs, tech video blogs. So if Mark and I wanted to get back into filming a daily video blog, it would be very difficult to sell people the idea of, sit, of sitting in front of a cell phone camera. And in many ways, the WordPress theme industry has sort of evolved to that point now where uh, com uh, WordPress company, theme companies need you know, multiple cameras, and lighting, etc. So back in the day, this is uh, how we designed a the theme um, was, and I know that we were not the only ones, this is pretty much how the whole industry would do it. We'd visit sites that we like, probably a CSS gallery, click on like a few of the popular ones which have five star ratings, look around the site and be like, cool, this is how I'm going to design our next theme. It could be a video blogging theme, it could be a photography theme, it could just be a normal blogging theme. Um, and this is what you'd come up with. So it ticks all, it ticks all the boxes, we thought. Uh, it's got a menu at the top, it's got some, some post over here which has no relevance to the post down there, and this is a slider for that, and we'd call this a business theme, and we'd get away with murder. And uh, somehow, some would sell, others wouldn't, and we didn't, we didn't know why. Um, mostly because at the time, we were trying to sort of shoehorn special features into what essentially was a blogging platform. There was no such thing as custom post types 
back in 2010 or 2009. Um, so this is what we did. We, we would go and find that cool design and not copy it, but take inspiration from it. There'd be no study behind why we were creating that design. There'd be no market research. We'd just be like, cool, we're gonna do this because we like it, or our competitors are doing something like that. And then we'd start to try and fill certain categories so we could build up our catalog so that when we came to our site, there wasn't just one theme. Then everyone started to get really smart. We're like, you know what? What would really sell the theme is if we got a rock star designer to create the theme. So this is a theme created by Trey Walton. Um, he designed recently the Microsoft.com website. And back in the day, we dropped him an email. and We said, hey, dude, could you create us a video theme? Um, yeah, that's it. Go wild. You have a, an open book. It's up to you to determine uh, what it looks like and stuff. And he sent us th this as you know, the PSD, and it cost a huge amount of money for the time. It was all our savings, something like six or seven thousand dollars, two PSDs. So we're like, okay, this looks nothing like we built before. Uh, how are we going to make this thing sell? So we actually sat there for a while, and we didn't develop it at all. And eventually, when we got our first employee, Peter, we, we didn't have much for him to do at the time. So we thought, okay, well, he can create Gigawatt. So we're like, here, yeah, Peter, take Gigawatt. This is going to be your first WordPress. Work WordPress uh, theme project, good luck. So they hacked it together, used little bits and pieces from our previous themes which had no framework or direction whatsoever, and out came Gigawatt, and all of a sudden this thing just turned over sale after sale after sale after sale. And we're like, how is this possible? We don't even know what's going on here. So we then hired another premium designer and spent another $7,000 on PSDs, and it was, it was a flop. And we're like, what the hell's going on? And the thing was, in the way that we were developing products, and it wasn't, this was an industry-wide issue, was we throw things against the wall, and it's still happening today, and that's sort of what I want to talk about, is people see what someone else is doing, try and mimic what the, the idea is, stick it up there, and see if it gets sales, and hope that if it lands on the Theme Forest homepage, or if affiliates pick it up, that they're going to get these massive spikes and become instant millionaires. Uh, that's not what happens. So here we were shoehorning massive features into a blogging platform, and generally the growth was like this. Um, this is a graph taken from Sales Genius, which we created to sort of track market trends across the WordPress theme industry. And this is the general trend um, of themes when you look at video blogging, portfolio themes, uh, photography themes. There's not much growth, if any. And in some, some areas, it's, it's dipping. Um, in this day and age, the WordPress industry and what you're building on has changed radically. It's no longer just a blogging platform. Themes themselves are now something which I associate to a Tumblr website. These days, you've got to, you've got to look at WordPress and the, the themes that you create for it and start calling them products, because that is essentially what they are. A theme, for me, is just a different skin, and you stick that onto your blog, and when you get bored, you stick on another theme or skin, like your desktop background. But these days, what WordPress can offer and how the industry has shifted, you now are facing a whole bunch of like new challenges which need to be addressed and, and studied and understood before you can just push out a cool skin made by some rock star designer. So if we look at products these days, you'll see that um, they become very similar. The highest selling ones specifically on Theme Forest. I'm just going to use Theme Forest as their products as an example because we have numbers for them. So this is one of the highest selling themes, Vada. This thing makes, I don't know, $120,000 a month, maybe more. And um, one theme author, one theme. All they do is focus on this theme, and it's a business theme. And it has e commerce integration with WooCommerce and WP e commerce. Here's another one. Also a business theme, but they're pitching it as a portfolio theme. Essentially, you can do exactly the same things. Also, as e-commerce, makes about $60,000 a month. Then we've got Enfold, which is made by Creasy. Um, pretty close to $70,000 a month. He launched it in May, and it's like rocketed up the, the rankings. It's a business theme, and it's packed with features. Now, earlier in the talk, we uh, many specifically discussed how features are bad, and I do agree to a certain extent that features can be bad, but that's if you're just throwing them against the wall. So how do you build a product um, which is filled with features that people will actually use? So you've got to start 
to think about how you're going to build things using data. So at the beginning of this year, I walked into the office and I said to my brother, um, Bru, we are not, we're not doing this smart enough. We need to analyze what areas of uh, the industry are working and focus as much as we can on that. So we started to track all our competitors manually. We had an Excel spreadsheet, or Google Doc Excel spreadsheet, whatever. And uh, we'd mark their sales every single day. And every day we'd log in, click on the high selling things, write down the numbers. And we saw, we started to see a trend. We, wouldn't have, we had no way of graphing it. So we eventually created Sales Genius and we could start to visualize these graphs. And we realized that the things with the most features were the ones that were selling well. But we refused to just copy features that we saw uh, on other themes and stick them into our themes. We needed to understand how those, uh, why those features are working and which features would suit our customers most. So we started to really focus on using our products and client work. So we committed to doing one client project a month where it be it a small business or a large business or a freelancer, we wanted to find out exactly what they need to without just putting out a survey. We wanted to get into the nitty gritty. So by using our products, we started to realize what sort of custom post types we needed to create. We kept getting requests for team pages and services and customer testimonials and you know we want a, a map to our office locations and we want some of us have numerous office locations so let's implement that. So we started to learn, okay, let's consider that each one of these post types is a product in itself. So what features would suit that best? So with each post type we'd start to ask questions, get answers and slowly but surely we developed um, thorough products which formed a framework and allowed us to create sort of different skins on top of a theme or product which is filled with great features, useful features. Not just it's not just about changing the background color. Those are sub features. You've got to um, realize or analyze what you add on the top level, and then if people want to get really technical and detailed, how do they go a few levels deep to change that? Those are like the power users, etc. Essentially, what we're trying to solve here is a lot of customers who buy our themes are not tech savvy. They don't know CSS. They don't want to bother with CSS. Um, us as developers, we often don't understand that, and sometimes we don't understand how they don't know CSS at all. But essentially, 90% of the contact emails that we get is, do I need to learn no coding to change uh, the color of my theme? And you've got to be able to say no these days, otherwise you're going to lose that sale to some of the big selling themes on theme forest, for example. So when, when you get the, these questions, you've got to analyze them and break them down and see like, Okay, how often are they being asked? Um, does this fit into a product we've created? Uh, are there enough requests for us to create this type of feature? Is this feature viable? Is it flexible? Um, the net result on our side was we brought, built this sort of framework which we call Dynapack. Um, and it forms the basis of all our themes now. And what it allows us to do is focus on just the features that we created, the custom post types, and the color changing options and then focus on, on the front end, creating beautiful designs. So we can focus on typography, we can focus on creating uh, demos which have um, amazing content, uh, which, are, which is tailor-made for each market segment. So even though we're creating business themes and e-commerce themes, um, we can now target, okay, let's create a theme and output a demo which now represents, for example, a gentleman's uh, clothing store. And Using our data and understanding which subcategories are working best, um, we can now tackle these these uh, areas, and the result is massive growth. So, if we can look down there, that's like ten or twenty thousand brand, and up here it's close to a million. So, up to here, this is all blogging and portfolio stuff. Now that the theme industry or the, has changed and it's become e-commerce and products, I mean, and business. You need to look at it more than just someone who's changing a skin and creating products which are useful for them. Um, the way I see the industry moving is that if you look at the car industry, they have entire floors in their buildings which just focus on the smell of the car. So when you get into an Audi, no matter which Audi you get into, the smell of the leather, um, the smell of just everything, it smells like an Audi. And the same class with BMW and Mini, etc., etc. 
Um, they have divisions which focus on when you press a button, whether it's the aircon or your indicator or uh, the traction control, it always feels the same. They have entire divisions employing people, probably more people in this room, just to focus on how the button feels. They've taken every single facet of their product and they're trying to push it to a new level. And I truly believe that that's where the product development of themes is going to go. We're eventually going to have to have people who focus purely on the user experience, on the front end and the back end. We're going to have to have people who focus on the front end CSS and HTML and speeding it up. You help, you'll eventually have these divisions in your company which that is their primary object, objective. Um, when in terms of uh, creating demos, you need a content producer, and the moment that job falls on me, it takes about three days now for me to create a theme demo. Um, back in the day, we just import the, the, theme con the demo content from our previous theme into the new theme, cool, press publish, live, and wonder why you know, this photography theme that we built for photographers is not selling, and then you look at the content, you're like, well, the content you're showing is like for tech blocks. Um, gone are the days where you can just slap a theme together and launch it and hope that you're going to make a few million bucks. It's not going to happen that way. Um, you need to pay attention to every single detail. And finally, you need proper um, data analysis. Um, gone are the days where you could just thumb suck a theme design and look at what works well on a, a CSS gallery or whatever, what's getting retweeted the most. Now, every single design you do has to solve the problem of the niche that you're trying to um, get into. Uh, last year we launched a theme called Ambition and it was a, for talented people. Um, so that meant sportsmen, musicians, artists, and so on. And we spent three months just discussing and, and asking and interviewing sportsmen and musicians to ask what they needed in this theme. And the net result was something which they could all use and uh, was actually quite useful and successful for us. It formed the basis of how we approached product design for themes in the future. Um, I watched a video the other day, uh, I'm pretty sure most of you have seen it since we were on the table, but it's uh, Johnny Ive on a kids program, like a children program, and the, the kids had to make a bag which could put their lunchbox in it as well as their school stuff and everything. And you know, he went through a whole bunch of uh, examples and he chose some winners and eventually they asked him, if you were going to create a lunchbox which could put all these things in a dynamic or you know, neatly, where would you start? And for me, and something that we've carried through at OWAX this whole year is, he said, the first thing I'd do is I wouldn't, when I sit in the room with the product people and we're coming up with concepts, the, the first thing I would do is not call it a lunchbox. Because straight away, you put yourself in this, uh, on this mindset of creating a box which stores lunch. You've got to call it something else. And uh, that starts to open up a whole bunch of new avenues. Because if you say lunchbox, you immediately think square, and my food goes here, here, here. And I think from now on, that's how you're going to look at uh, how you create themes. It's no longer a lunchbox. You can't, you can't call it a theme anymore. You can't just look at it as a business theme. You've got to look at the niche and see how you can work your way around it. And yeah, that's all that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Any questions? All right. You mentioned that uh, creating a proper theme demo may take three days. So isn't it reasonable to believe that it takes a buyer of one of your themes, I don't think it's unique to y'all, uh, at least that amount of time to then configure a site that they thought they were getting a pre-designed template ready to go and is that a, a problem or a threat to the theme industry or WordPress in general? Okay, so in terms of creating the demo, um, what I mean is curating the content of, of the site. So the, the, the site itself you can set up quickly using placeholders and lorem and text. But in terms of actually, uh, well, when I say it takes me three days, what I do is I go, okay, for example, I have the latest theme which we haven't launched yet called Department. Um, the aesthetic of the theme and everything suits something like sports shoes, selling sports shoes or uh, selling plastic furniture. So what I did was I spent an entire day looking and saving sports shoes and then and bicycles and plastic furniture. And I resized all the images to a certain set. I made sure, for example, that the sports shoes all aligned to a certain baseline and were all the same size. 
uh, crop the images, then implement them into the demo to see what it looked like and how it would represent the niche that we we're trying to approach. And uh, that, that whole process uh, took three days. So the actual theme setup itself um, should only take a few hours. And I know that this is an industry-wide issue because we can see it in our, our uh, theme support forums. Setting up a theme at the moment is a proper nightmare because WordPress is not, is not a linear process. You first got to add your content and then if you've got a widgetized website, once you've added the content, then you can visualize the widgets um, in their correct place. Uh, so the theme itself should only take a few hours and hopefully one day it is a one click install with the, the demo con the dummy content. Um, we are actually now doing a whole bunch of user testing on that. And like we're going to invest hugely in the next few months on some trying to get as close as we can to a one click install. How much can you automate? But something that people forget and don't realize is that with any website, if your content is crap and it doesn't matter you know, how good the design is. You need good content to, re to make a design shine, regardless. And that's what takes people a lot of time. I know people um, who sell shoes online. And I can tell you now, they did not sit there and align the shoes to a baseline and then resize each image to make sure that the shoe fit inside a certain box so that it's consistent on each product line item. They upload the image and hope it auto resizes and it's a done deal. Some shoes sit up here, some shoes sit down there, some are zoomed in, some are zoomed out. And it looks crap. That, in its own, is trying to, you need to educate a person on how to manage and set up a website by default. Um, I don't know why. Sorry. So, one of the big. All these woof woo things, Captain. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the. Um, Controversial things of Theme Forest is the lock in that it creates with all the features and custom post types. Right. So it's very popular with users specifically because it's like a one click solution. Yes. But then you've got this other market which is most of developers. Yeah. And that's where most of the controversy sits yeah. because developers understand that the features in terms of changing the theme are best suited to certain plugins yeah. because then you design agnostic. Right. So how would you guys approach that then if you, because you sell primarily on theme parts and that is like one of your main markets. And so yeah, you've kind of got the, the got the user market which you have to serve mm -hmm. and then you've got the developer market which yeah. you also have to serve. Yeah. So you've got the one click installs and yeah. then you've got the developers. How would you approach that? So, I mean, that's a challenge we face like every day. I often consider, you know, we have the three pillars of people who are trying to service. It's like the really dumb end user who wants a one-click install. Then it's a person who has this vague idea of how WordPress works, and then finally you have the developers, and that each each uh, pillar needs to be catered for. Like if you're catering for developers, best you make sure that your code is well documented, well formatted. Um, but on the same side, a user, an end user, does not care about code at all. So where do you like dedicate your time? For us, we realize that the majority of our customers and specifically on WordPress, I mean on Theme Forest, uh, they're end users, they're people who, who barely know what Google is. Um, at the end of last year, we did some proper user testing in a room, we sat behind one way glass and watched our users use our theme. The first person who came in went to oboxdesign.com, clicked login, and we're like, that's a new customer, why are they going to login? And try to log in with their wordpress.com details. And that's the level of user you're, you're dealing with sometimes, especially when it comes to WordPress themes. They know WordPress, they know that this is like this thing where you can change the design. Cool, I don't even know where to start. So for us personally, we took the decision, we used to try cater more for developers, um, but we, so many of our questions in our forums are, how do we do X, Y, Z? And the answer is often, I don't know, we need a program for that. We're like, okay, how do we get rid of that element? How do we make it as smooth for the end user as possible? Cool. Any more questions? Awesome. Thank you very much.